Signal flow is really important as it allows you to quickly diagnose where your problem will lie. All sound comes from a sound source. A vocal microphone, a keyboard, an electric acoustic guitar. Sound flows from that to your input box on stage, either directly from a microphone or from a DI box or directly down a quarter inch cable. That input makes its way into your mixer input, which then gets sent to a couple of different places. It gets sent to the main mix through some processing, then onto main amps and speakers, and a portion of it could be sent out to an aux send feeding an amp and an on-stage monitor or in-ear monitor transmitters. A portion of that signal could also go out to an effect unit. Don't forget that an input may have an insert effect placed in line with that channel too. That sure seems like a lot of stuff going from piece to piece, but a little studying of that diagram will really kind of help you understand that signal flows from one device to the next to the next and so on. Once that's rock solid in your mind, then troubleshooting really becomes second nature. Let's go back to our little tiny, tiny uh, PA system here uh, for an example. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I bring this up and you can hear that this mic is working. So from here, I know that the mic's working, the cable's working, the input channel's working, and the amp's working, the speaker's working, all of that is good. I also have my bass guitar hooked into the first one where the first channel with the fader is up here and I'm not getting anything out of there. So what's the deal? I know that the PA is working, in other words, the mixer, the uh, amp and the speakers, uh, speaker in this case, that's all working. There must be something breaking down between here and here. So here's the first thing I'd do. Is this a bad cable? So let me put this back down here. I'll bring down the PA and I'll pull this guy out here. This is a known good cable. I know this cable works. I've tested it before. So I'll plug this guy in and the other end of this guy I'll put in the bass guitar and hopefully everything should work. So out with a bad cable, in with a good cable. And we'll bring this up and still get absolutely nothing. Well, I know this is a good cable. Here's another thing I could do. I could pull this out, try it out with a guitar, another guitar, another sound source. And where's the other end of that? Plug that into here, bring this up and great. So that is working. Now I know that everything is working from this point onwards, right? So let's bring this down. Why the heck isn't this bass guitar working? Well, a couple of you guys might be bass players or you know, guitarists in general. If you have active preamps on a lot of guitars like this guy here, uh, there's no battery in here. So here's the deal. Throw a battery in here. Uh, where's that guy going to do? Okay, we put that in, get the other end of this guy. Where is he? I've got too many cables around here. Plug this in. Bring this up. So now we have everything working. How did I come to that conclusion? Well, first thing I did was swap out a cable. And then even if the, that new cable is working, then what, you, what I could have actually even done, if I bring this back down here, I don't suggest you do this if the PA is, you know, uh, turned up all the way. But I can hear this is a good cable, right? So everything is from good from this point out. So therefore, if, if nothing's happening on, say, a sound source like this, then first thing I'd look is, does it have an active preamp? And, you know, electric bass like this aren't the only ones to have things like that uh, in terms of electric preamp. A lot of electric acoustic guitars will have that, so swap out the battery. Um, but can you kind of get an idea? This is a very small example of troubleshooting, but the principles really are the same. Let's go back to that uh, example again. If we can hear something through the main speakers, then we can surmise that from the mixer to the speakers is okay. We don't have to check any post-mixer processes, amps or speakers. Something is happening from the input to the mixer. Like is it a bad cable? Maybe something wrong with the mic or a DI box? 
Conversely, if we're hearing nothing from the main speakers, then I wouldn't be sweating anything from the stage to the mixer. Clearly something is breaking down between the mixer and the speakers. So the logic kind of goes like this. Is the problem before or after the mixer? Or before or after the in-ear monitor transmitter? Or before or after the monitor sense? If you can develop a quick set of questions to ask yourself, then you can go ahead and test that question. Um, so for example, imagine the vocalist says that she can't hear her uh, any hi-hat in her in-ear monitors. Ask her if she hears anything. And she says, yeah, I, I hear everything else. I just don't hear the, the hi-hat. So you can conclude from that, from working backwards, that her in-ear monitors are working, which means that her receiver pack is working, so is the transmitter, and so is the connection from her monitor send to the transmitter. You also know that other people are hearing the hi-hats, so and you can hear them out of the main speakers, so you know that the hi-hats mic input to the mixer is fine. So where's the problem? You bet. You don't have any hi-hat channel feeding her monitor mix. Here's another example. Maybe there's no sound coming out of the right hand side speakers. So working backwards, are the speakers connected to the amps? Yep. Are the amps on? Oh no. Okay, so someone obviously forgot to turn on the main amps that run the right hand uh, side. Turn them on and you're good to go. So you can see uh, that understanding signal flow allows you to systematically move through the signal chain kind of backwards until you identify the source of the problem. And you know you can normally rule out big chunks of the signal path. Like you know when you can hear everybody else through the, the the main speakers, then you know everything from the mixer on out is fine. Start working back from the input back to the sound source because this is actually where most of the problems occur. I've found we'll start with the source to input signal path. Let's look at an example of a kick drum mic. The sound of a kick drum is transferred pretty simply. Just a mic goes into an input box which feeds an input channel. Where are the points of failure from source to mixer? Well, it could be a bad mic. If it's a condenser mic, it'll need phantom power. Make sure that's on. It might be a bad cable. It might even be a bad line down the snake. And also the other end of the snake may not be connected to the mixer's input channel. In this signal chain, I'll list the most likely failures you know, down to the least likely ones. Probably most likely at all is that something isn't plugged in uh, correctly. Is the mic connected? Is the mic cable connected to the input box? Is the cable from the input box connected to the mixer channel? Also make sure that the mic has a phantom power uh, you know, if it needs it, if it's a condenser microphone. Now, if you have a professional install with a snake running you know, either through the rafters or underneath the floor, then this is probably the least likely part of the chain to be bad. It, it can happen, but it's you know, probably not that, it's not the most likely. So let's look at a wireless microphone. This is pretty similar to the wired microphone scenario we just looked at with the added steps of the transmitter in the microphone and the wireless receiver. So in addition to the regular steps of checking all the connections, we have to check whether the mic signal is making its way through the air to the receiver. So is the mic okay? Is it on? Is the receiver on and is working? Are they communicating? Is the receiver connected to the input box? The other end of the snake to the mixer input channel? You can see that we have a number of points of failure in both scenarios of wired and wireless microphones. A line input or something that comes down a DI box has similar points of failure. Is the source okay? Is the keyboard on? And is its volume up? Does the electric acoustic guitar have a preamp that maybe needs a new battery? Then is the connection okay to the DI box? Is the DI box okay? Is the connection from the DI box the input box okay? Is the connection from the snake to the mixer's input channel okay? So these are the three main types of inputs on the stage uh, to the mixer. Wired and wireless mics and DI boxes. All of these are pretty basic in terms of what can go wrong uh, with the probably the exception of wireless systems. We'll look at that in a second. With the exception of the wireless signal chain, the other ones are fairly simple. A sound source that makes its way to the mixer's input channel. 
So here's how to troubleshoot them. In the wired mic scenario, are all the connections okay? Next, start swapping out each element in the chain. Test the microphone by swapping it out with another known working microphone. I always have a spare dynamic mic like the, you know, the old standby SM58 in my toolbox. We can use this all the time for testing and just swap out you know, a possibly bad mic with it. If we tap the you know, SM58 and it all works and we hear that mic just fine, then everything after the mic is okay and we've just zeroed it down to that bad original mic. Now either it's a bad mic or you know, maybe it's a condenser mic that needs power. Just plug it back in and press phantom power on your board and it, you know, it should fire right up from there. And by the way, um, that's why I have an old beat up SM58 in my back pocket. It's a dynamic mic that works as easily as just you know, plugging it in and just you know, tapping it. Just make sure it works. And then uh, just leave it in your pocket when you need to uh, troubleshoot. It's very handy. So uh, we can use the same procedure in every part of the signal chain. We normally call it you know, swapping out or A-being. Take a known good element like our trust, trusty SM58 or a known good mic cable and swap it out or AB it with the unknown one. Uh, you'll soon get to the bottom of the problem with that. It's really easy to swap out a mic or a DI or a mic cable. It's a little harder to do with a snake that goes from your stage to your mixer. Just swap out a line that does work and if that fixes the problem then you have a bad line down your snake. Bit of a hassle if that snake has been professionally installed, you know, up in the rafters or underneath the floor. But at least you know, uh, you know, where the problem lies uh, there. And by the way, that's why I always have a number of spare channels on that snake run when we, you know, install that, just in case any of those guys go bad. So you can see all the places of failure in these chains, both in the connections and also other things. They're fairly simple to diagnose, but always pay attention to the ones where people mess with your cables the most. Now, if you're running sound in a permanent installation like a club or a church where there are many different sound people who come in and out, uh, you know, with varying degrees of skill levels, who regularly just, you know, run a mark and start pulling cables out of here, these are the two places that I would look first. Are your cables all connected to the input box on stage and has someone you know, rooted around the back of your mixer and unplugged something to plug in a, a DVD you know, a player's audio for a special need and just kind of left them unplugged uh, uh, when they leave? The, I can't stand this stuff. It happens all <laughs> the time. So a good remedy to this is to clearly label the cables on the rear of your mixer so if, if anybody ever unplugs them they'll be you know, very easy to just repatch in. So um, always look at the connections on both sides of the snake and also you know the easy steps to uh, diagnose and swapping out mics and DI boxes here but wireless troubleshooting probably needs a, a little more detailed uh, explanation. A wireless system uh, c consists of a transmitter and a receiver and both must be on the same frequency to communicate. VHS systems operate from 150 megahertz to 216 megahertz. UHF systems operate in the 470 megahertz to 698 megahertz range. It, it actually used to be a little bit higher, uh, but that was recently reclaimed for digital TV use. Now, I won't go over the benefits of each. You can find all of that in the wireless buying guide at the uh, buying guide at the, at the following URL. Now, there are even some in the 900 megahertz range, but we don't need to bother about most of these because normally when you buy a wireless system there, they just come you know, completely matched up. Some wireless systems allow you to automatically find a suitable frequency to work with, you know, automatically scanning for you know, unused frequencies. Um, I won't get into how to set the frequencies, just consult your user's manual because it really varies from, uh, from manufacturer to manufacturer. Make sure that your transmitter is turned on and of course it has a fresh battery as well and also your receiver is turned on as well. In whatever way your particular model does it, make sure that you match their frequencies so that the transmitter can actually transmit to the receiver and the receiver can pick that up. The output of the receiver then goes down that signal chain just like a wired microphone from there on. Um, and you can decide whether you want the receiver to live you know, at, up on the stage uh, or next to your main mixer. There are pros and cons of, of each. I would normally always put the receiver in a position where it's closest to the transmitter that it can be, and that's normally you know, out there on the stage. You could move the receiver around until you get the best position to receive a glitch-free, noise-free uh, signal, then connect it to that input box 
just like any other input from your stage. But here's where you might want to place the receiver uh, by your mixer out in the main mixing position. Maybe you're running short on lines down your snake that go from the stage to your mixer position. So I'll go. <laughs> uh, you can alleviate that by placing the receiver out here at the mixer position. It's not the optimum place, especially if your mixer position is really far out into the room. But you know, it's a it's a good option if you don't have enough lines in your snake, that, and and it's kind of hard to run new ones. Now the same goes with any other wireless system, such as wireless guitars or in-ear monitors. Make sure that your belt packs have fresh batteries in here, and you have a good line of sight. Uh, between your transmitters and your receivers and you know certainly match up their frequencies they've got to be matched up and by the way there's a good source for looking at available frequencies at the following url some of your wireless systems will allow you to set your uh, your own frequencies others don't in terms of troubleshooting monitors we can follow the same logic the flow goes from an input channel through aux sends onto either an amp and on-stage monitors or an in-ear monitor system. So as long as you have an operating input, that is you have a vocalist, for example, coming to, into your mixer, if that's all fine, we worked out all that input troubleshooting in the last section, then the fault points would be, is that signal being sent down an AUX send? Is the AUX send master up? Is the AUX send connected to my amp and on-stage monitor? or the in-ear transmitter slash receiver. So there are basically three different stages of possible problems. The first is inside the mixer. Do you have the AUX sends you know, set up properly? Are those sends on AUX 1 pulled up you know, across or in varying amounts across all of the mixer? And also is the AUX 1 master up? Then is that AUX 1 sent from the back of the mixer out to the amp and then to the on-stage monitors? I mean, are the amps on? If we're using in-ear monitors, then we used to need to use our basic wireless troubleshooting logic that we just learned a moment ago. Is the transmitter on? Are the receiver belt packs on? Are they matched up to the same frequency? Now, if a person on stage can't hear any monitors, then it's either inside the mixer, problem with no sends up, or maybe the master not being up, uh, then is the amp uh, you know, not being on or any of the connections in between. Like I said, it, a wireless issue if it's an in-ear monitor deal as well. Now, if they can hear one thing but not the other, then everything past the mixer is fine. And now it's just a deal with the individual AUX sends and how they're set. Most likely, it's going to be the connections. Check the AUX send out of the mixer and also the connections between the amps and then the on-stage monitors. Check if the amps are on. If it's an in-ear monitor thing, then take out your wireless troubleshooting guide that we learned a moment ago. So you can see how many things can go wrong with connections and or frequencies. So my big suggestion here is actually make that, uh, you know, actually make this a commandment. You need to have a line check before the band even turns up. Take a few moments to tap out all of the inputs and make sure that they are coming up onto the board right here. I normally have someone uh, on stage just with a drumstick and just gently tap on all of the mics and make sure that they're all coming up here uh, where they're, they're supposed to come up. Uh, maybe strum on a guitar or just bang on a keyboard or do the old you know, one, two, down all the vocal mics, just make sure there. So you can also listen to all the monitor sounds on there, maybe by sending, if you have a CD player or something like that uh, right here, you can send uh, that CD channel right here down to the various AUX sends, have someone on the stage send it down, AUX send one, are you hearing the CD? AUX send two, are you hearing the CD? And all that kind of stuff. Also make sure that all the, you know, have fresh batteries and all of your uh, wireless systems are all working correctly. Once you know all of the inputs are good coming into the board and all the AUX sends are good going back to the monitors and also out to the main speakers, then you're pretty much, you know, you, you're good to go and then you'll be ready for when the band comes in. So a good solid line check ensures that everything is connected and working. You'll learn how to, you know, make them sound good in the sound check. Uh, you know, when the actual musicians come in on the stage, we'll learn that in a little while.